I've been diving deep into Poppy Playtime to find any secrets or clues I may have used. What I did find recently are some groundbreaking concepts that never made it into the game. Some of these scrapped ideas will blow your mind, and some even hold secrets to the possible outcome of Chapter 4. The first abandoned concept that captures our attention is the flare ammo. We're all familiar with the orange hand that shoots unlimited flares, but comes with a short recharge time. However, the developers seem to have something else in mind initially. In the early version of the catnap boss fight, we can see an ammo box and small ammo shells lying around the floor. These leftover items reveal that the orange flare gun was originally meant to be reloaded with live ammunition. In Chapter 3, its only uses are to fend off the mini smiling critters and get rid of the fake catnaps. But the devs could have originally planned on letting us do more with the orange hand, like giving us the means to kill these tiny critters. The ammo box also appears to be constantly refilled through a tube. This would have most likely been Ollie's method of giving us more bullets. It's dark to think that Playtime Co. was more than just a toy factory and could have been a secret weapon manufacturer as well. It's possible that Mob Entertainment wanted the game to be less violent and more kid-friendly. This led to them throwing this concept out and switching to the harmless orange hand we have today. The next scrapped idea revolves around our mysterious ally. Did you know that Ollie wasn't always going to go by that name? In some unused voice lines, we can hear what Ollie originally sounded like. Ollie's original voice sounds more mature and has an accent compared to the childlike voice we're familiar with. It's also a lot harder to hear the original voice as the technology he's using to communicate with us isn't as high tech. But here's where it gets interesting. The scrapped character actually reveals his name and tells us something important. Need a name for me? We'll go with... Ace. I'm making this call on Poppy's behalf. Probably don't want to talk to her right now, I get it. But trust me, she's keeping you here for a reason. Now, there's an escape in play camp, but you gotta help me first. And the first favor you could do for me? Stay alive. Stay away from the playhouse. Ace also told us that he's working with Poppy just like our current Ollie is. He also informs the player that he would help us, but Ace needs to be rescued first. This means that we will definitely be seeing more of Ollie in the future chapters. There are many possibilities for Ace's true identity. Is he a former factory employee just like the player, or could he be a kid that somehow escaped? Whatever the case is, the original Ace sounds a lot more trustworthy and human than the Ollie in the final game. But there's also a possibility that he's a toy, and since the name Ace is a popular choice for cats and dogs, he might be a dog or cat toy. We'll see in the next chapters. Everyone is familiar with the final boss of the statues game, PJ Pugapillar. But did you know that he was supposed to have a different face and gender? We got a glimpse of the original concept of this crawler in Chapter 2's original trailer. Originally, PJ Pugapillar was going to be called Cassie Cutie Pillar. Instead of having a dog-like face, PJ Pugapillar was going to look more like a normal caterpillar with a pink snout, beady eyes, and antennas. But the problem with this character is her being too cute. The goofy design doesn't really fit the gnarly and scary aesthetic that Mob Entertainment is known for. Cassie just looks too innocent when compared to the other hostile toys in the game. Take Huggy Wuggy for example. Remember how he scared the lights out of you the first time you played through Chapter 1? Even his mini versions are horrifying. We also have Bunzo Bunny's perfect teeth that never fails to give you a heart attack. Mob Entertainment likes to stick with the theme of toys with teeth, probably because it makes them look more menacing. That's why they scrapped Cassie and we ended up with PJ Pugapillar in the final game. But these scrapped ideas seem minor when compared to the next one. Probably one of the most important pieces of scrapped content is the removal of two statues. These statues were supposed to be located in a room during the hallucination section in Home Sweet Home. The room is more basic, but it shows two statue placeholders. The first statue would have been of Elliot Ludwig, and the second statue would have been of Stella Graber. We have seen little about them both, and so far we have no idea what Stella Graber looks like. We've only heard her voice from the pink VHS in Chapter 1, and the intercom voice from the game station. Stella is the head of Playcare and is one of the six higher-up employees, the others being Elliot Ludwig, Holly Sawyer, Leith Pierre, Eddie Ritterman, and the head of production, who is theorized to be the player. Notice how the statues are placed in the room with Stella's statue being next to Elliot Ludwig's and a poppy water fountain right in between. Could this be hinting to us about the characters' relationship with each other? Well, the banner above them says it all. Home sweet home. One theory about this is Poppy is Elliot Ludwig's daughter. The position of the statues and the banner might symbolize that they are a family with Stella being the mother. If these statues were finalized, players would have had more clues about the identity of these main characters. One of the most questionable scrapped pieces of content happens right before we reach Dog Day. In the final game, 
You can reach Dog Day after completing a simple puzzle where many critters try to attack you. However, solving that puzzle wasn't the original plan. Originally, the player was supposed to take a boat ride on a duck to reach the prison where Dog Day is held. Who would have known that behind a layer of wall hides an entirely different route to Dog Day? The player was supposed to ride these huge ducks and go down a predetermined path while pulling levers. This could have been where we'd have to shoot the mini smiling critters instead of where they are in the final game. And no, the devs didn't even bother to remove this area from the game and instead just locked players out with a wall. Perhaps they thought this section was too boring and players would lose interest and they decided to go with the puzzle and critter chase for the final cut. The last piece of scrapped content that captured our attention is these abandoned toys. These characters were going to be called Jolly Clown, Lovebug, Psydog, Sunny Buddy, and Lily the Frog. First off, Jolly Clown. Just by its name, we can already tell that this is going to be one evil character. In Poppy Playtime, the characters with friendly sounding names turn out to be the most gruesome. Ahem, <laughs> Huggy Wuggy. Lovebug was a cute and fluffy little insect with wings that appeared in the final game, but only as a schematic of a rejected toy. Psydog's design notes say Enet and Jimmy Neutron. Psydog would have probably been a toy that could connect to the internet. Imagine how potentially OP he could be as an enemy, and that could be the reason why this idea was trashed. Psydog was probably based on Goddard from the TV show Jimmy Neutron. He was also a mechanical dog that can transform into various tools, so it could be possible that they were planning to give Psydog transformations as well. Sunny Buddy was an interesting toy at first, with its changing faces. However, he didn't have any other redeeming qualities. He did end up appearing in the game as a rejected toy, but was ultimately cast aside. Lily the Frog was cancelled probably because of the same reasons. But here's a scrapped toy idea that might be still lingering around. Remember Bunzo Bunny? Well, it turns out that originally a bird was supposed to be in his place. The same notes from before showed a few bird toy ideas most people think have been scrapped already. But here's where it gets interesting. In the Bunzo Bunny comic from Mob Entertainment, Bunzo used a grab pack to get an egg from a high area in the game station. And when he stared at his grab pack hands, he had accidentally crushed a real bird's egg. As far as we know, there aren't any bird toys that we see in the final game. However, there's a high chance that the egg Bunzo found might have come from one of the scrap toys. This could mean they might still make an appearance in the later chapters. Which scrapped content idea would you have loved to see in the final game? Tell us in the comments section below. If you enjoyed watching this video, then hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to ring the bell icon so you always stay tuned for more content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.